aspirants, I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankara AS Academy. Today's date is 9th of November 2024. Now before getting into the list of articles, I have certain announcements for you. The most awaited UPSC prelims test series 2025. Batch 3 is starting on 21st November 2024. We have provided you the registration link in the description. You can click the link and you can register for this test. Apart from this, new batch of Chakra is starting on 12th November 2024. It is a program exclusively for current affairs. So, if your weaker part is current affairs, you have to enroll for this particular test series. The brochure for Chakra program is provided in the description. You can click that and enroll for this particular program. So, with this announcement, let us look into the list of articles for today's discussion. In this first article, we are going to see the difference between separatism and extremism. And in the second article, we are going to see Indian President's immunity to any offence. And in the third article, we are going to see River Krishna from the prelims perspective. So, without any delay, let us get into the news article discussion. Now, look at this news article. This news article talks about Donald Trump's presidency. As you all know, he has been re-elected as President of United States again. So, the article just tries to analyze whether the four criminal cases that has been imposed on him will be under trial or not. See, the answer to this is actually no. He will be trialed for all the four criminal cases irrespective of his reappointment as president. So, this is what the article is talking about. So, in this news article discussion, let us revise about role, power and impeachment of president of India from the prelims perspective. So, let us start with election system and the qualification of president in India. See, in uh, India, we have uh, indirect election meaning people they do not directly elect our president. Instead, they are elected by members of parliament and state legislative assemblies. Here, the important point that you have to note that is even though president nominates certain people to the member of parliament, these nominated members will not elect a president. So, this has been made because the election should be free and fair and if in case these nominated members are allowed for the election, then they will be obviously voting for that particular person, right? For So, in order to avoid that only, the nominated members, they will not participate in the electoral college. However, they will be participating in the impeachment process of president. Just remember this fact. So, there will be a secret ballot voting. It will be overseen by the Election Commission of India and certain important articles include 54, 55 and 56 talks about President of India. Talking about the qualification of Indian President, he should be an Indian citizen and he should be with a maximum age of 35 years and he should be eligible for Lok Sabha elections and he should not hold any office of profit. These are certain important qualification that is mentioned in Indian constitution itself. Now, talking about powers of our president, he is the former head of the executives, meaning the parliament itself comprises of the president plus the members of parliament. Okay? He can set rules of document authentication under Article 77 and he appoints Prime Minister, Key Ministers, Attorney General, Governor under Article 75 and he requests information, investigates marginalized community. This is under Article 78 and he also appoints Union Territory Administrators to be specific uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor and etc. This is under Article 3 and this is under Article 239. Finally, he declares the scheduled or uh, tribal area. This is under Article 244. So, these are all certain executive powers that is provided to our President of India. Talking about certain judicial power, he appoints Chief Justice and Judges of Supreme Court and High Court and he can seek any advice from Supreme Court on legal matter. This is under Article 143. You can easily remember this article because it is 143. Okay. Apart from this, he can grant pardon, reprieve or reduce sentence. This is under Article 72. Remember these articles very important. Talking about certain legislative powers, he summon, prorogue and even dissolve Lok Sabha. And he can call for joint sitting of parliament in case of deadlock in any legislative process. And he also addresses the parliament under article 187. This happens twice, once every first session of a new year and once every time when a new government is elected. Secondly, he sends message to parliament on bills 
this is under article 89 and he can nominate 12 Rajya Sabha members this is under article 80. Apart from this he decides on matters of member of parliament disqualification this is under article 103 and he can even issue ordinance this is under article 123. So these are all certain legislative powers that are present in the hands of president. Apart from this he apart from this he has many other powers like uh, military power, diplomatic powers and emergency powers. Now talking about the impeachment process of a president, see the president can be while See, the president can be impeached for the violation of the constitution, but the violation of the constitution, this term is not defined in constitution, okay. So, the process of impeachment, it can be initiated in either of the house and it, and it should be signed by one-fourth of the members. Once this initiation has been done, the president will get 14-day notice and can be appear and be represented in the investigation. So, for the approval, it requires two-third of the majority in both the house and if this happens, the president will be revoked. Here, the important fact, as I said earlier itself, the nominated members, they will be actually participating in the impeachment process, but the state legislators, they will not participate in the impeachment process. And remember, no president has been impeached so far in our, in our Indian polity. So, remember all these facts. So, so far, we saw about president his election process, then we saw certain powers of president, then we saw how he will be impeached. So, with this understanding, let us try to solve a prelims question. Let me read out the question for you. If the president of India exercises his power as provided under article 356 of the constitution, irrespective of a particular state, then, see this is a previous question asked in 2018. The correct answer for this question is option B. The power of the legislative, the power of the legislature of that state shall be exercisable by or under the authority of the parliament. So, this is the correct answer. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, take a look at this news article. This news article talks about National Socialist Council of Nahaland, in short called as NSCNIM. See, this NSCNIM is actually in use because the leader of this faction, T. Mua, has actually threatened our government saying that they are going to restart the armed violence for the first time since 2015 framework. See, under this particular framework, Agreement has been signed between our government and this particular faction. The agreement acknowledges Naha flag under constitution. So, there will be a separate flag under constitution for Naga people. So, due to the violation of this particular agreement, Naha, Naha Lang's faction NSCNIM has threatened our government. So, this particular faction feel that this agreement has been violated and that is why this threat has been issued. This is what the article is talking about. So, in this news article discussion, let us revise about the difference between extremism and separatism from the prelims perspective. Firstly, let us start with extremism. What is extremism in India? See, it holds a extreme ideology that is very different from the normal or moderate belief. So, actually they reject any kind of democratic process through violent means and they actually lack territory. Some of a very good example of uh, extremism in India is left-wing extremism and religious extremism. Government uses security measures like uh, CRPF uh, officers and the COBRA unit to tackle these extremism in India. There, secondly, there are certain developmental programs like the aspirational district program under which they use schemes to develop these particular area in order to suppress the extremist ideology. Apart from this, there are particular schemes and there is a particular scheme called surrender and rehabilitate in which the surrendered extremist activist will be rehabilitated by the government itself. So, these are all certain tactics that is handled by our government in order to suppress this extremism in India. When we talk about separatism in India, it is actually a movement or demand and it is actually based on their identity and this identity could be based on linguistic identity or ethnic identity and etc. So, it is confined to a specific territory. A very good example for separatism in India is the northeastern state and the Jammu and Kashmir that we saw earlier. Government uses political dialogue, for example, the agreement that we saw in the news and through certain constitutional provisions and insurgency control, government actually works to suppress the separatism in India. 
So in simple words, the difference lies in the idea of the concept. If you take extremism, it is actually an ideology. But when you take separatism, it is based on identity. So we can tell that this ideology, it can spread across territories and it can be found anywhere in India. But when it comes to separatism, it is specific to a particular region and it is specific to a particular matter like a linguistic or an ethnic identity and so it is very specific to a particular territory and to counter both these government is working on bringing a lot of governmental measures like aspirational district programs special concentration schemes vibrant village programs and etc to bring progress to the region so these are all certain facts that you have to remember when it comes to extremism and separatism with this facts now let us try to solve a preliminary question consider the following statement about government response to separatism in india here three statements are given and you have to find which of the statement given here is or not correct see the correct answer here is option d all the three statements are actually correct there is a special constitutional provision like article 371 providing autonomy to specific states and the coalition movement in mumbai during 1970s is an example of separatist movement and the development and integration programs such as ek bharat sesha bharat aims to foster unity among states all the three statements given here are correct answer so with this learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this article the news is that a sea plane has been landed in krishna river it is actually a trial run for tomorrow's official launch of this sea plane this is what the news is about so from the prelims perspective let us revise about krishna in geography so the river krishna has its origin in western ghats in mahabaleshwar in maharashtra so the river course has a distance of 1400 km and it flows through important cities like sangli vijayapura raichur kurnool and vijayawada so after flowing through all these particular important cities they drain at bay of bengal so this is about the river course of river krishna so it has its origin in western ghats just remember this and talking about its tributaries some of the important rivers like bhima tungabhadra koina katprava and musi rivers are actually tributaries of river krishna and the most important river is tungabhadra it joins krishna at sangameshwar in andhra pradesh In this Tungabhadra River only, there is a very ancient city called Hampi, which belongs to Vijayanagar Empire. So remember this fact. Talking about the dam and irrigation, Nagarjuna Sagar Dam in Andhra Pradesh and Sri Shalam Dam in border of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana are the most important dams that support irrigation for agriculture, provides drinking water, and provides water for industrial purposes as well. So make note of these two dams as well. Talking about the cultural significance of river krishna it has two important temples sri sailam and parandarpur temple both these sites are very important historical and religious important sites talking about the wildlife sanctuary that is present in this particular river course the first important reserve that you have to remember is nagarjuna sagar sri sailam tiger reserve it is india's largest tiger reserve which lies between andhra pradesh and telangana The second important wildlife sanctuary is the Koyna Wildlife Sanctuary. It is in Maharashtra. Thirdly, the Bhimgat Wildlife Sanctuary. It is in Karnataka. Then the Rola Padu Wildlife Sanctuary, which is in Andhra Pradesh, and the Ranganathittu Bird Sanctuary. It is in Karnataka. All these protected area or in the river course of River Krishna. Make note of all these facts as well. It is very important. So so far we saw about River Krishna, its origin. then we saw certain tributaries of river krishna then we saw cultural significance of the place and finally we saw the wildlife sanctuary that is present along the course of river krishna so with this fact let us try to solve a prelims question which of the following is not a tributary of river krishna the correct answer for this question is option c pranhita except pranhita all the three bima Tungabhadra and Gadprabha are all the tributaries of River Krishna. So with this, we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment, and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar Ayer's Academy YouTube channel. Now, thank you so much for listening.